the next kind of major topic game I was looking at is like, you know, uh, basically talking about programming technology. Which, I mean, you know, the, the, the article didn't go into a whole lot of uh, depth about, but I think, you know, there's some some really interesting things that you, you kind of uh, uh, um, look at about this, uh, you know, um, a lot of, you know, what they, what they spent, ta you know, talking about was, um, uh, what was a lot of what they talked about was basically the, the, this idea of the, um, uh, the, the frostbite engine, which EA decided that they were going to use across all their studios to save money and basically share, um, uh, you know, share technology. Uh, and, um, which is you know, basically kind of like, you know, uh, but, you know, a lot of people kind of complain about it in the game. They talked about how the, the engine was full of razor blades, as they put it, which is kind of an amusing idea. But um, but I think, you know, like uh, when you talk about when you're looking at like an engine like that, uh, a lot of times, you know, like as a programmer, you know, we talk a lot about concepts like. Um, we talk a lot about concepts about code reuse and knowledge sharing and things like that. Um, the idea being that you know, like you, you know, people shouldn't be rewriting, you know, rewriting the the wheel. Um, you know, if there's, you know, if somebody's writing the code, um, in in an organization, then um, if somebody else needs that code, you know, they should there should be a way to use it. I mean, there's a whole kind of like you know system of programming called uh, object oriented programming. that's supposed to be kind of be you know really focused on that. Allowing people to write, you know, these objects to basically, um, and then somebody else can basically come along and reuse that code. Um, and engines are kind of the same, you know, the same thing in a way where, you know, a lot of the basic stuff you you want to do in a game, um, the, the the most basic being, you know, like throwing up images on the screen. Um, you know, you shouldn't have, you know, they, they shouldn't be reinventing the wheel for that. Um, and so, uh, and, and within reason, like, one of the, one of the problems you run into, like what they, what they said in the article is that the management kind of wanted to, uh, I mean, there's obviously existing engines out there, but the management wanted to kind of like standardize on something and not have something where they had to pay licensing fees, especially to a competitor. Like, you know, every time EA licensed the, the Unreal Engine, they were paying money to... Epic, which is a competitor that makes you know games that compete with EA games. So in some ways, they you know, like you know from a business point of view, they were essentially funding. They were eventually essentially funding their uh, competitors when they licensed the uh, Unreal Engine. And so you know like, there's there's definitely kind of a design or a business argument for not doing that. <laughs> Or you know, like not, you know, like keeping your competitive advantage. But then the issue is when your in-house engine doesn't work for what you're doing, then you're kind of right. I mean, and so it, it, you know, it's well, it's kind of tough to say, you know, to see, you know, to to know exactly what went right, what went wrong. Like, oh, like a lot of times, you know, like the, the programmers have kind of this tendency. To be like, well, I didn't write the code, therefore I don't trust it, therefore I don't like it. Mm -hmm. And I think, like, to some extent, we, like, for game programmers, you know, we kind of extend that to, if I didn't write it and I don't feel like it's a standard, like the Unreal Engine or you know whatever, uh, Unity. Unity or whatever, right, right, then then you know then it's a bad thing. You know, we should we should either be doing something that either I wrote, or that is a standard. Um, I mean, and this is kind of like, you know, um, when you have like an internal engine, uh, a lot of times the one of the problems you run into is, you know, with programmers is training. Um, if you use the Unreal Engine, well, you know, someone, you know, like a programmer might have used the Unreal Engine in another project, or they might have like, you know, download, you know, free SDK to understand what's going on, uh, that type of thing. I'm getting invaded again. Yeah, it's a different mission. Yeah, but it's Stefan Suda again. Like, you know, like They're mad. <laughs> I guess. The <laughs> mad boys. I guess. Oh, that's Not Geo Yan. Geo Yan. That was a weird name. I'm sorry, I can't word. It's okay, um, I'll I'll just tornado them. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
Hey, look, they all bundled up in that little pile. I know, it's, it's really useful <laughs> for Ignis. <laughs> it's really convenient for my Ignis. You're welcome. Have them all bundled like this. Um. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, and so like, if you have this internally designed, you know, internal end, you're not gonna have, um, you're not gonna have, as, you know, as much. You're you're kind of to the whim of your support team. Right, right, exactly, and you're not gonna have people that are gonna, you know, come into the company, having already, you know, so already having some knowledge of how the how the engine works. They're gonna have to train from zero. Um, and, uh, and, and that basically kind of like, it, 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 it's longer until they become, um, productive. Right. Um, and so, uh, I'll be back uh, sec. Sure, sure. Um, uh, but on the flip side, I think like, yeah, it's important to kind of look at, um, saying basically, uh, if you look at, yeah, like for all the complaints, about the Frostbite engine, saying it's full of razor blades and whatnot. It was used for a number of very high-profile, you know, uh, games that did very well. Um, you know, I, I think that, um, you know, again, like, you know, a lot of times programmers tend to have kind of attitudes about, um, this thing is inferior, I could do a better job of it under certain situations. Um, and so, uh... Sorry. No problem. Um, and so I think that, you know, like, I think this is one of the things that I looked at, I kind of felt, you know, like I had to take the biggest grain of salt with, uh, on the article, you know, like all the people talking about, like, the flaws in the, in the, in the Frostbite engine. Um, because I get the feeling that there, you know, like, there, there's probably a lot more advantages, um, then uh, you know people wanted to give it credit for like you know there's probably a lot of well i didn't write this engine and i'm not familiar with it therefore it's terrible yeah i i can i can see that point the only thing that i that stuck out to me about that was um them just saying that uh they couldn't get a hold of their support team because of right. other projects right right I mean, this is you know, it, this is the this is the issue you got you got to keep in mind. I mean, but but a lot of the complaints they made about the engine too, I think, were kind of like false. It's like you know, it's it's not like you know, Epic you know gives uh, the same amount of uh, uh, engine support to you know, indie make indie that you know as they do to EA, for example, when you know when EA would uh, license to them, mm. or, or even that they give their you know they even even the amount of support they give their own you know uh, internal. Epic. Yeah, give their own internal teams. Like I mean, you're old, you're, right, right. I mean, exactly. Oh, Fortnite has an issue with their engine. They're gonna have a dedicated representative on the firm ready to go. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Like, you know, so when you have like a big, especially if you have a big game like that, like yeah, they're gonna be supporting it a lot more. And you know, and for Epic. You know, for the Unreal Engine, like they're going to support people. They're going to basically that they anticipate are going to be paying more royalties. Um, you mean money so, matters? I know. <gasps> it's almost like we live in a capitalist society. <laughs> sorry, I just killed the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry, now I got distracted by something here. Um, I was, I was looking up the notes. Uh, uh I, I think that um. I, I, but I think that yeah, like there there are obviously were a couple of um, um, flaws with it. Like one of the problems you run into is um, you know the the iteration time. Like one of the one of the things you want uh, one of the things an engine should do for you is like you should be able to make a change and see it pretty quick in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, but they talked about like you know there being a twenty four hour turnaround time to test uh, you know for the lighting to be baked into the uh, game. Um, and basically, you know, and, and they made it sound like, you know, like there, they, like this was a, uh, this was like a, a major, you know, stumbling block that they, you know, anytime they made a change to a level, it took a long time for them to kind of, for it to basically like rebuild. And yeah. I kind of suspect that like, you know, like this might be, uh, hyperbole. And maybe not necessarily hyperbole, but like, but, um, like improper use of the tools. Mm. Um, 
like, you know, like, because often when you have a, 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 an engine like that that has baked in lighting, usually they'll, they'll have something that kind of gives you an approximation. Because, like, so to, to, so to define what baked in lighting means is, like, so you have lighting in a game. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, when it's baked in, basically, that means that, um, when you put in a light source, it kind of calculates what that light source is going to look like. Okay. Yeah. And so basically, then well, it becomes a per go ahead. permanent part of the uh, the level. Mm. Um, this is compared to dynamic lighting, which uh... tend which tends to be like you know much more CPU intensive. Like you know, mm -hmm. it's a lot more flexible, but it's going to be a lot more CPU intensive. And so baked in lighting is going to be less flexible, but it's going to look better. Right. And, and you know, in situ you know, in in the majority of situations. Yeah, when they were talking about baking lighting, that was uh, that was Greek to me. Yeah, yeah. So basically, you know, so you know, you can so you can imagine like when you when you're doing a you know, say, say you're a level layout guy, uh, and and you decide you know uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna put in you know this this lamp here. Well, the two ways to do the lighting is basically is, is to figure out okay, well, lamp you know the light's gonna be this intensity, this color, it's gonna you know shine this far, it's gonna have this much fall off based on atmospheric effects. And so, you know, like the light on the far wall is going to be calculated and you kind of just like baked in, you know, potentially as part of the texture even. Um, and so, uh, and so, you know, basically it'll look, it'll look a lot better, it'll look a lot more realistic, um, except for the fact that, you know, you might not be able to get, uh, you know, except for the fact that you might not get, um, you know, things like, you know, dynamic lighting. Like, you know, if you stand between the, uh, if you stand between the, the lamp and the wall, um, you might not uh, um, get the shadow. You, you, may, you, know, you might not cast a shadow or things like that. Um, and so, you know, and, and you know, and generally, like you know, like games are kind of designed in a way so that these things are the 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 visual impact is going to be minimized. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, I got stuck in an elevator, so I'm kind of playing catch up here. Oh, um. The 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 exit point was pointing to the elevator, which was I could have just fell down. I didn't realize that until afterwards. Talking about great level design. Um, <laughs> Procedural level generation. Right, right. Uh but yeah, the, the kind of the con but the, so the concept being that um. Uh, it takes but it takes a while. But essentially, you know, the the trade off is when you're doing dynamic lighting, you use a lot of CP while the game's running. Whereas if you bake in the lighting, you do all those calculations ahead of time, and but you do a, you know you can even do even more calculations to make things look even better. Um. Uh, and so you know basically, so basically when you do baked in lighting, though, like usually if you're planting something, the engine or the the design tool or whatever will kind of show you a rough approximation of what it's going to look like. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, I, I wonder if, you know, the, you know, I wonder if it really, if it legitimately took 24 hours for them to test things because, oh, we've got to bake in the lighting each time. Well, you probably didn't have to bake in the lighting each time. You probably could have, you know, um, you know, played it, you know, played it looking a little, a little, a little rougher, a little less interesting. Um, but, you know, like, you still, you know, been able to get turnaround, um. You think there just yeah. might have been a misunderstanding with what the tools could, right. could and couldn't do? Right, right. I mean, that, that could be an issue, too. You know, maybe they didn't even get, you know, like, maybe the tools supported that type of thing, but, like, they couldn't get, <laughs> they couldn't get anybody to basically kind of come along and say, oh, by the way, do it this way. Right. Which, that's a sad, that's a sad. Right. But, again, like I said, I, 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 I you know, I kind of take a lot of this kind of uh, uh, these complaints with a, you know with a grain of salt because I kind of get the feeling that you know it, like things weren't quite so dire as people wanted to make it sound like. We all have Ignis. Yes, <laughs> okay, so we're all here. Yeah, like once you start going into programming, I kind of. I, I have nothing I can contribute. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sure uh, Dejar is probably uh, eating up. I'm checking chat. Yeah. Oh, it's 
commonly underestimated how expensive it is to build a general purpose game engine. Yeah, I, I, I think that, that's kind of one of the, pro the, the the points I wanted to do is that like you know like building a true general purpose game engine is actually pretty tough. Um, because a lot of times you'll just kind of run into things like you know where the the, the original where the original engine designers didn't intend, um, like uh, you know like one of the problems I like I was back when I worked on an MMO project it was supposed to be kind of this um, uh, pirate themed game and so like a lot of the game was going to be people on uh, people on sailing ships, <laughs> um, but. Uh, uh, it was going to be people on sailing ships, and so I was evaluating this one gen, and I was asking, like, you know, can we do that? Can we, can we have, you know, can we have something where it's not, um, where, you know, where we don't have a person as a, the avatar, where we can have a vehicle or something like that? And they're like, the engine writers were like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't think about that. Like, you know, we don't, nobody asked for that. It's like, oh, okay, well, <laughs> gotcha, I gotcha. <laughs> Understood. Let me, let me run down a note here. Um, but yeah, like, if you want to make a true general purpose engine, it's it's going to be tough. And yeah, like you need you need the tool support for it. You need a lot of you know you have you need a lot to go along with that. Yeah, I think uh, I remember hearing rumors. I think there's mm. rumors that the engine that. 14 runs off as like a a bastardization of the Havoc engine. Mm. I think. Don't quote me on that. I mean, it's entirely possible. That's what I heard, you know, five years ago. Um. I mean, a lot of times, like, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll get that. Like, you'll get, um, You'll get people basically. Uh, um, you'll get companies that basically like, buy an engine or license an engine. And they'll basically just—they've got licenses for it. So you know, even if the if even an engine kind of gets outdated or whatnot, they'll just kind of use that as a base. Because a lot of times, like you don't—I mean, again, going going back to the concept of code reuse, you don't want to. Um, you don't want to re—you know—to to re to uh, you know. Um, reinvent the wheel you don't want to keep on doing the same thing over and over again especially as a game programmer like you don't want to do i mean that's kind of why one of the reasons why i think you know engines have become so popular in the games industry because like you know people want to do the interesting hard coding stuff once you you know you know the sexy coding stuff and once you kind of like you know uh, a, a, a game engine is not that <laughs> right <laughs> throwing pixels up on the screen is not not really you know it's not really that you know for a lot of people uh, unless you can, you know, unless you're kind of like the, some of the hardcore programmers that think, you know, that really think like, oh, I, I really want to do this great thing, this thing that nobody's done before. Like Anthem. Uh, well, I mean, Anthem, uh, you know, like use the Frost Engine, but yeah. Um, but it's supposed to be this great thing that no one else had done before. Right. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, I mean, that, that's the design. I mean, and the tech side, you kind of like, <laughs> you, you want to kind of be careful of that. You don't want to kind of be careful that you're not. Uh, um, uh, you want to be careful that you're not. You're basically, you're not just reinventing the wheel. You're not, you know, wasting your time um, doing what somebody else has already done, and perhaps even better. And you know, whether that's you know, licensing an engine, an external engine, or basically even you know, reusing an engine that's been developed internally. Um, I, I, the other, and we talked and we talked a bit about like you know fighting for resources, but I think I think the other thing you need to look at too is like you know, kind of going back to the types of programmers, is that um, like a lot of times in especially in the games industry, we tend to laud the people that basically do um, uh, the kind of the, the the high risk high reward type of thing. Mm -hmm. um, the people that kind of come in and put out fires and are the, you know the hero for. Doing amazing things, um, like with those type of people, tend to get a lot more kind of recognition and admiration than the people who kind of do like essentially do good work without you know like um, who do great work without necessarily you know like you know it being the sexiest sexiest thing. Like, you know, like, like in the article they talked about like saving and loading system, like. You kind of want a saving and loading system that works, and you know, but like, this is not terribly sexy work. 
um, a lot of times, and a lot, it's, I guess another another prime example of this is basically kind of what Dara was talking about is tools. Like, you know, uh, real programmers that, you know, like, you know, think they're hot shit and whatnot, don't want to waste their time with tools. That's just it's beneath stuff. them. So, yeah. Right. Well, I mean, so, you know, like a lot of times, you know, even, you know, pretty much a lot of projects, like, you know, the, the, um, the tools are basically kind of like farmed out to the junior programmers. That's why you have senior... junior programmers. Right. Well, I mean, but, but the, the sad part, of course, is like, you know, you generally want, especially in a, in a, in a game as a service, you want really good tools to make it so that people, you know, like, you know, your developers, you know, have great tool you know basically have the tools they need to make content mm -hmm. if you know and it, it's kind of like this really um difficult dance because a lot of times you know you've got to make these tools as you're developing pretty much everything else and as the design is trying to figure out you know kind of what the hell they want um because a lot of times design will kind of you know like and you know and uh, you know there's kind of a conflict between you know like Programmers who basically want something very functional that may, may not be very user friendly, versus you know like you know, uh, designers who you know sometimes want something that's very you know like powerful, but you know maybe you know like you know, get you know allows them to get into more trouble than they really want to get into. Um, but yeah, I, I think that yeah like the whole, yeah, there's a there's a lot of, kind of room for uh, how a lot of these things work. Um, they like. And uh, you know, like the, the, how how programmers are treated on such projects, you know, when you when you because when you start trying when you start when you start rewarding the firefighters, the the mavericks, the cowboys, essentially, then then you know people will want to become the mavericks and the cowboys and whatnot. They don't want to be the people that go and go off and do their own thing. When you know maybe they don't they don't have the talent to do that, or or yeah. like. Or worst case scenario, somebody like Amp sets up a situation where they have to kind of become, oh, this is broken. Let me fix it, madam. You know. Um. What do you mean they're not talented enough? Mm -hmm. There's, there are the. My mom mm -hmm. said I was the best programmer. I mean, you know, I I think kind of like you know being real. I, I, and again, like you know, like. It's tough in the games industry because because you do have a lot of kind of like, like these massive egos, um, and I mean I I think this is one of the issues like you know like uh, for me personally is like I don't I don't claim to be like you know this like super uber programmer like you know I'm I'm very I'm competent <laughs> I write maintainable code but I'm not you know one of the cowboys uh, and you know when it comes to like you know what you know. A lot of times, like especially like you know, interviewing, you know, like programmer interviews, tend to be like you know, like alpha programmers trying to you know, you know, you know, measure you know, basically programmer dick size, you know. <laughs> right. And it becomes like you know, very much not what you know what I'm interested in personally. Like you know, for me, like programming was kind of a, a means to an end to to create kind of the cool things I want. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm not a programmer for the sake of being a programmer, but like a lot of times, you know, that is kind of the attitude a lot of programmers have. Like, oh, I, I just love technology. We have to win this. And so that kind of goes back to the idea of them like not really, not really liking the uh, the the engine because this is not something this is not something they worked on. This is not their baby. Right. Exactly. And um, they want to knife their own babies. Well, no, people don't want knife out babies. Uh, uh, um, beer pack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need to go retrieve a knife. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh no. no. Mistakes were made. <laughs> yeah, and, and so, yeah, like I said, I think, yeah, like, you really kind of need to, you know, have good programming discipline. I mean, you really kind of need to kind of, like, uh, appreciate everybody on the team, you know, even if they are kind of the boring, plotting programmer that, you know, isn't the fastest, isn't, you know, aren't doing the cutting edge stuff, but, you know, like, just write good, maintainable code that, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's the sad part is that, like, in, in a lot of, like, team settings or social settings in general, it's, it's the, the reliable, mundane person that just doesn't get 
acknowledged most of the time. Right. But right. everyone needs that person. Right, right. I mean, and we see it as boring, you know, kind of going back to um, talking about, uh, um, uh, you know, the grind in MMOs. Like, you know, like, you know, most people in their job now, you know, don't don't want excitement. <laughs> they don't want, you know, they don't want to thrill a minute. They want, they want to go in there. They want to do their job stuff done they want to go home yeah you know, they don't need you know all this you know a bunch of scary stuff happening for them so yeah the genre brings up a good point you can't be the hero unless there's a disaster right, so if right. you want to be the hero well i like oh i and i think that you know in, in the games industry in particular it's it, you know it's it's almost kind of the opposite way around there's so many disasters because and we'll get this you know we'll get to this when we start talking about the management part of the things um there's so many disasters because you kind of have terrible management terrible project management that you kind of need these like super cowboy programmers to come in and fix all the fires because well you know we didn't give people enough time to kind of you know develop the stuff in the first place or we sent you know we spent so much time meandering without uh, a direction that you know like we couldn't you know we couldn't, you know, lay out a plan to, for how we're going to do things, or, 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 you know, or even kind of going, you know, to my favorite topic about crunch. You know, um, we're just going to schedule crunch in, so, you know, people have to work long hours, and <coughs> excuse me, people have to work long hours in order to uh, put in things, and that means, you know, corners have to be cut because there's, you know, we're trying to fit, you know, a hundred hours of work into an eighty-hour work week. Uh, for any of uh, any artists or or doodlers that are listening, I now have a request for a fan, uh, a community character of Captain Crunch, <laughs> Colonel Crunch, Colonel copyright, <laughs> copyrights, trademarks, Colonel Crunch. <laughs> <laughs> I need it done by Friday. Right. But yeah, and it's uh, you know.